Hello everyone, welcome to chapter 7. So chapter 7 is uh, titled Anti-Infective Agents, and I know that may sound complicated, but an, a layman's term for anti-infective agent is antibiotics. So that's basically what we're going to be learning about today, the different types of antibiotics that are out there. So here are the learning objectives. I'm just going to skip through that and move on to the fourth slide, which is on anti-infective agents, so antibiotics. And in dentistry, one reason why clients may come to us is because they're complaining of pain. And the pain could be due to cavities. Another reason why um, clients come to us is for periodontal disease. They have calculus, they have tartar in their teeth, their gums are bleeding, their gums are not healthy. They could have bone loss, and that's all part of periodontal disease. This is why we as hygienists, well, our, one of our main goal is, is to eliminate periodontal disease or treat periodontal disease and make the gums healthy again. Sometimes they could have localized dental infection. So localized means in one area or in a specific area, and they could have an infection. So here we see abscesses, right? And these abscesses are infections. And sometimes what a dentist may do is when they see an infection or an abscess of uh, this sort, they may prescribe antibiotics. So if they have a big cavity, sometimes it could lead to a huge abscess like that. And sometimes it may need antibiotic for it to be treated. So let's look at gram positive and gram negative bacteria before we get more into antibiotics and I'm sure you guys have heard of this before in your previous courses but just to recap gram positive is um, bacteria that's not so bad gram negative is bad bacteria gram positive some people say are actually good bacteria and so usually when you take this to the lab and you put um, a drop of uh, dye it turns purple and if it turns purple it's gram positive if when you put that drop and it turns red, then it's gram negative bacteria. And usually gram positive bacteria are aerobic, which means they um, need oxygen to survive. And then gram negative are considered anaerobic, which means they don't need oxygen to survive. Most actually, if I go back, most dental infections are mixed. So we have a mixture of gram positive and a mixture of gram negative. And most dental infections are that. Why is that important? Because there are antibiotics used for mixed bacteria, so mixed infection. And so we use specific types of bacteria to treat dental infections when the bacteria are mixed, when we have a mixture of gram positive and a mixture of gram negative. So let's review some terminology. So when we say anti-infective agents, what we're saying is a drug that destroys infection. So any infections that we have, a drug would destroy it. So that's considered an anti-infective or anti-infective agent. Sometimes people will say antibacterial agents, and that means if you have bacteria and you want to you know, kill or slow down the growth of bacteria, then we would use um, a drug called antibacterial drug. And then this is the one that we're very familiar with, antibiotic agents. And basically what that is, is um, a general term to say that there are drugs out there, antibiotic drugs that are out there, that will either kill or destroy the organisms, or in this case the bacteria, or it will suppress the growth, which means it will slow down the growth. And there's two ways it can do this. One is bactericidal. So when I think of this, I think of suicidal. If you're suicidal, that means you, you want to kill. Um, you know, you want to kill yourself. So same thing with bactericidal. You want to kill bacteria. And here's a picture that I like to um, use, and I'll be using this picture throughout these um, PowerPoint, where you see someone with a knife stabbing that bacteria, and that bacteria will just literally die. So bactericidal is when that bacteria is killed. And what really happens is that the cell wall, so the bacteria cell wall, basically um, shrivels up and, and it just gets killed. Bacteriostatic, on the other hand, is when the growth of the bacteria is uh, suppressed or it slows down. So here we see someone just, uh, you know, kind of 
wrapping the bacteria around with a string or with a rope and kind of holding it and you know maybe choking it to slow down the, the bacteria from growing or from running or from doing what it has to do okay so bacteria cidal is killing the bacteria bacteriostatic is when it slows down the growth of that bacteria so it doesn't necessarily kill it but it slows the bacteria from growing and replicating and so there are so many different types of antibiotics. We're going to be looking at some of them, and some of the bacteria fall under, or sorry, some of the antibiotics fall under the bactericidal, which means that if you take any of these antibiotics here, it will kill the bacteria. So it will just literally kill the bacteria, and the bacteria will die. And then we have bacteriostatic antibiotics, where it will kind of slow down the bacteria from replicating, or it will slow down the bacteria from growing. You'll see how some of the antibiotics have a asterisk next to it. So you see over here, macrolides has an asterisk, clindamycin has an asterisk. And what the asterisk means is that if you give that antibiotic in a higher dose, or if you give more um, stronger doses of this antibiotic, it may turn into bacteriocidal. Okay, so it may be bacteriostatic. And then if you give a high dose, it'll become bactericidal, where the bacteria will just die. So when we're looking at a microorganism or when we're looking at a bacteria, let's look at COVID-19, this microorganism, since we're familiar with this, things we look for is how um, virulence is it? This means how bad is it for you? How much disease, how contagious, how bad is it? And COVID-19 is pretty virulent, right? Because it's pretty bad, it spreads really fast. Inoculum is refers to the way I think of it is vaccination. Sometimes we say, has your child been uh, inoculated? And that basically means, has your child been vaccinated to be protected from bacteria? So with COVID-19, there's no vaccination out yet. So uh, the inoculum is poor. The, there's no vaccination, so none of us really are protected from COVID-19. And then we also look at immunologic response. That means if we get infected with this, are we, so host means body, is our body able to fight it? And most of us can fight for COVID-19, but there are some, especially those that are immunocompromised who have a weak immune system, they won't be able to fight it. And unfortunately, those people may, uh, you know, it may be fatal. So how many of you guys remember when you go to a doctor, maybe with a sore throat and the doctor take a swab? If the doctor takes a swab, I think I have a picture of it. So if a doctor takes a swab inside your uh, mouth, what they're probably doing is they're going to take it to the lab for culture. And what that means is they take it to the lab to see, so they take the swab, and then in the lab they see what type of bacteria is in that swab. And then based on the type of bacteria that's in the swab, they then do a sensitivity testing, which basically means that they check to see which antibiotic would be the one for this um, bacteria, which antibiotic would be the one to kill the bacteria? Because we know there are so many antibiotics out there, but we want to get that specific antibiotic that will really do a good job killing the bacteria. So culturing and sensitivity testing, culturing is taking the swab, taking and then taking the swab to the lab and getting it tested to see which bacteria is in that swab. And sensitivity testing, sensitivity testing is figuring out which antibiotic or which medicine will kill that bacteria or will kill that infection. And so one of the way they do this is they, they stain the bacteria. And when they stain, if it's purple, they'll know it's gram-positive bacteria. If it's red, they'll know it's gram-negative bacteria. And then there are specific antibiotics to treat gram-positive and to treat gram-negative bacteria. Hey, there is a huge problem right now, um, and it's actually been around for quite a while, a while, and it's called antibiotic resistance. And what antibiotic resistant is, it's basically if you take an antibiotic, the antibiotic won't work. And the reason why it won't work is because the bacteria will win. The bacteria will tell the medicine or the antibiotic to, you know, um, basically will punch them in the face to say that you're not going to do anything to me. I win. I'm going to be able to overpower the body with bacteria. Your, the medication will not work at all. 
And the way it basically works is um, it's actually a process where let's say these are all the microbes that we have or all the bacteria, could be good, could be bad. You take an antibiotic and when you take an antibiotic, we hope that all the bacteria dies. But let's just say in this case, there's one bacteria that didn't die. And now that bacteria, what happens to that bacteria is it's, and this is a bad bacteria, this bacteria spreads all their bad genes to all the other bacteria. And any other bacteria that's out there is going to make it bad again. And so what that means is that's actually what antibiotic resistance is, that even if you were to take a medicine, it won't work. It won't kill the bacteria because this bad bacteria, it overpowered and it made all the bacteria bad. And if you were to even take an antibiotic, it won't work. And that's pretty bad. That's antibiotic resistance. And there are ways we could prevent antibiotic resistance, which I'll go over in the next slide. But just know that um, there is a chance that if you were to take an antibiotic, it may not work, especially if you didn't follow the instructions. Um, if you're someone like me, and, I, and I'm guilty of this, I promise never to do this again. But in the past, I have actually done this where I had, let's say I had an infection, I was uh, prescribed antibiotic, and maybe my antibiotic was for 10 days. And I, after three or four days, I felt better. So I stopped using the antibiotic and I threw it away. That is a big no-no. The reason why it's a big no-no is because we must complete the entire treatment. And the reason for that is when we complete the entire treatment, all the bacteria in our body will get killed. And that's what we want. If we don't complete it, maybe only half the bacteria will get killed and the other half will still stay around and linger and maybe make all the other good bacteria bad. And so basically the end story is just take the full course, follow the instructions, because if you don't, you can develop antibiotic resistance where the medication won't work. Okay, so as um, health professionals, we would always encourage our client to know that when a doctor or dentist prescribes something to you, they'll only prescribe an antibiotic when and absolutely when it's necessary. We don't like to over-prescribe antibiotics because of that reason, because you can develop antibiotic resistance. So we only prescribe antibiotics when needed. And again, when I say we, I'm sorry, I'm referring to doctors and dentists. Hygienists do not prescribe antibiotics. And so when we talk to our clients about antibiotic use, we want to tell them to use it correctly and to complete the therapy. So finish the whole treatment, and then you can go over any side effects that may happen with antibiotics.